Are you ready for birthday celebrations, Okinawa legends, and sporting events like you've never seen before? Then stay tuned. We'll take you inside the Marine Corps birthday ball, step inside the bull ring, and more. All this on this edition of High Sai Okinawa. Welcome to High Sai Okinawa. I'm Gabriel Archer. And I'm Kathy Millett. November means one thing on the United States Marine Corps installations, the Marine Corps birthday. And that means the Marine Corps birthday ball. We're going to take you to the Butler Officers Club for an inside look at what goes into supporting a Marine Corps ball. Marines on Okinawa celebrated the 237th birthday of the United States Marine Corps. The Marines marked the occasion at balls held at Marine Corps Community Services Clubs throughout November. MCCS Executive Chef Heather Neary says preparing for the balls takes months of planning. The planning actually starts probably March. We come up with menu concepts and ideas, then we do testing, and then we have to place an order. In order for everything to get here on time, since everything does have to travel across the ocean, usually we place the orders before the summer starts to ensure that everything's here on time. The kitchen is hot and hundreds of dishes are served, but the staff is calm. Everyone knows their job and what must be done for a successful evening. The shrimp cocktail sauce must go on at the last minute to keep the shrimp fresh. The roast beef is cooked and allowed to rest so it stays juicy when sliced. There's a lot going on in the kitchen and the organization keeps things moving smoothly. Well, the Marine Corps balls, we do pay a lot of attention to detail and it is a huge event for us. But the key is, is that because we're all so organized, it flows so well. So even though it's a monumental effort, it's seamless in operation. Well, to put things in perspective, if you go into a restaurant, generally it's about 20 or 30 seats. Well, imagine that times 10, times 20, and that's what you get. You get 400 to 500 plates a night. You know, and we serve thousands of pounds of beef, thousands of pounds of shrimp. It's just, when you really think about it, it's just really overwhelming. But when you break it down into its component parts, it's really, a, a great thing. And we can't forget about the main attraction for the evening, that spectacular cake. Oh, I love the cake. I'm not going to lie. It's, um, it's so wonderful to come in. Everything smells like icing and it's just so, it's so beautiful. And it's great to see everybody pose in front of the cake and get their picture taken. During the course of a ball season, we go through about 10,000 pieces of cake. And that's just our club alone. So you can imagine throughout the whole season, there's probably over 25,000 pieces of cake. It's a lot of fun, actually. Um, I really enjoy watching, especially the Lance Corporals. It's the first time they're here, and just the excitement, especially when you, know, you come and they get to see everything for the first time, and it's really great to see them when they walk in and they see the cake. The cake is always like, oh, look at the cake. And um, basically, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's very rewarding, actually. Get them all. March. We'd like to thank Headquarters and Services Battalion for allowing us the opportunity to film their special evening. Each year, MCCS supports approximately 45 balls from late October through early December. MCCS is proud to support our Marines and we'd like to wish all of you a happy 237th birthday. November isn't just about Marine Corps balls. There's Veterans Day and Thanksgiving, which means we'll have plenty of time off to explore the island and see a few things the island is famous for. Karate, castles, and beautiful beaches are just a few things the island is famous for, but many other interesting traditions and attractions abound. Even if you've only been here a few days, you're probably familiar with the Shisa. They seem to be everywhere on Okinawa. We'd like to show you the history and traditions of this Okinawan icon. They're everywhere on Okinawa. Desks, roofs, ancient temples, and even your local gift shop. You won't travel far on this island without stumbling upon a shisa. Since they are so popular here, you might think that Okinawa will be the only place to find this temple guardian. The use of shisa or any kind of dogs or lions first came about in the Middle East and India area and eventually transferred to China through the Silk Road. 
From China, it transferred to places like Japan, Korea, and eventually Okinawa as well. In India, the half lion, half dog statue is called a yali and has a dragon like face and a skinnier tail than the Japanese shishi dog, whose tail is thick and bushy, much like a squirrel. In China, the statues are called Fu Dogs, and these lion dogs are the closest to the Okinawan Shisa in appearance. Throughout Okinawa, these statues are commonly referred to as Shisa Lions, or Shisa Dogs, but actually neither term is correct. A lot of people say Shisa Lions, Shisa Dogs. I actually asked an Okinawan once, are they dogs or are they lions? And the Okinawan looked at me and she said, they're Shisa. So a lot of people call them Shisa Dogs, Shisa Lions, they're neither. Just like a unicorn is not a horse with a horn, it's a unicorn. A shisa is what it is. Shisa here on Okinawa is extremely important. Uh, most people, if they have a traditional style house, out in front of it, you'll see the two shisa setting there. You'll see, of course, one with its mouth open, one with its mouth closed. One of the theories goes that the one with its mouth open scares away evil spirits. The one with its mouth closed, however, keeps good spirits in or, you know, luck. There's a lot of mythological stories on how shisa came to Okinawa. Some say a Chinese emissary brought a Shisa necklace to the Ryukyuan king as a gift, which he used to fight off a sea dragon from Naha port. Others say there's a legend more popular than any other. There was a uh, small boy in a village up north. Uh, the village was basically terrorized by a uh, sea demon, sea monster, whatever you want to call it. And the little boy, you know, it upset him greatly. He, he, prayed and his answers was or his prayers were answered by a, a small stone dog shisa and and in a dream he was told that this shisa would protect him in the village well one day him and his grandfather was down near the beach sea monster came up and was going to attack him and his grandfather so he took that shisa and he threw it out on the beach when he did the shisa came to full size jumped in and attacked the sea monster well it went down under the villagers though were very upset with him because their one line of defense or one form of protection was done away with. Uh, the little boy, very upset, goes back, goes to sleep. When he wakes up in the morning, he finds that small stone shisa up underneath his, his head, basically, again. He takes that out and sets it at the, the entrance into the village to protect the entire village from then on out. You know, and that's one of the stories that are associated with it here on Okinawa. If you go to places like the Nakamura House, which is one of the tours that we offer, if you go there, you'll see, as you go into the house, first thing you'll see coming up to is the high pond. That high pond's a brick wall basically to stop evil from coming in because evil travels in a straight line. Up above that you'll see the shisa sitting over in the roof looking over top of that high pond. Supposedly if something evil tries to come into your house, the shisa will jump off the roof and attack it to scare it away. That's why you put them out in front of the buildings. This prize statue once only protected temples and ancient buildings. But the shisa has since become a protector of people's homes. One of the coolest types of shisa you see on Okinawa are the ones that are made that go on the roofs of people's houses. Because when they start making the uh, roofs for people's houses, the red tile roofs, when the makers would make the roof, the excess roofing tile and cement, when the roof was completed, was used to make a shisa out of that. So if you look at those type of shisa, every single one of them is unique. It's individual, uh, <clears throat> individual made by the roofer and they all have roofing tiles, cement, and they're all very, very interesting. According to Okinawan legend, true shisa can only be acquired one way. The shisa will not work, supposedly, if you buy them for yourself. They have to be received as a gift. Now that doesn't mean you go to your neighbor and say, hey Bob, look, I'll buy you a pair of shisa, you buy me a pair. It's gotta be given as a true gift. Can't be an arranged thing. And for High Sai Okinawa, I'm Sammy Feynman. If you're a Shisa fan, did you know you can make your very own Shisa at Yukimura? Sign up for a tour with MCCS Tours Plus. Are you going to sign up, Gabe? I'm actually thinking about it. One of the things I'm definitely signing up for is the next outing to see another legendary Okinawan event, a bullfight. Bullfights have long been a tradition on Okinawa. They differ from Spanish bullfighting in that it's bull against bull. They're also much more like a sumo match between bulls rather than a bloody battle. It's kind of like Japanese sumo. Only these wrestlers have hooks, are covered in fur, and sport a fearsome looking set of horns instead of a top knot. Togyu, it's Okinawan bullfighting. The fight kicks off with the bulls locking horns. They will then try to muscle their opponent to the ground. A bull wins when his opponent loses the will to continue the fight. The bulls are trained not to hurt each other too seriously, but an overexcited bull might occasionally gore his opponent. Needless to say, this puts an immediate stop to the match. 
the matches can last anywhere from a few minutes to over an hour. To keep the bulls excited, their handlers urge them on. Bulls are not known for their cooperative nature, so great care is taken by the handlers, especially after the match ends, to avoid injuries caused by the fired up bull. Bullfighting resembles sumo wrestling too, in its ranking system. There are weight classes and bulls can be crowned as yokozunas. Bullfights run throughout the year on Okinawa and the summer season features several. They're a great way to experience some of Okinawa's rural past. For Heisei Okinawa, I'm Kathy Millett. Anyone wanting to learn more about bullfighting or any other aspect of Okinawan culture can visit mccsokinawa.com. There you can find out about MCCS Tours Plus offerings as well as the many free cultural classes offered by MCCS. You can also pick up a copy of Okinawa Living to find out more about life on the island. A copy of Okinawa Living, a map, and a tank full of gas can get you started on a great weekend adventure. From everyone here at MCCS Okinawa, have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. We'd also like to wish all the Marine Corps a happy birthday. We thank you for all you do and are proud to support you. Thanks for watching. See you next month.